Hey guys, what's happening? Willie here at the Great Outdoors. Hey, today, ladies and gentlemen, I've got a reel for you that we're going to dig into that I've actually been holding off on because I've been trying to find parts for it. Um, it's sort of an obscure reel, and what's strange and obscure about it is that the later models are harder to find than the very early on models. That's the weird thing. Uh, very hard to find a schematic of any kind. A breakdown anybody even taking one apart so we're gonna go ahead and dig into one here real quick and uh, I'm gonna show you what it is and uh, hopefully get this thing working now this is going to be a part one okay I have found parts for this reel they are on their way now they'll probably be here next week but I was hoping to have this video out for you this Sunday, so in order to do that, we are going to have to have a part one. Part one, to be continued. I used to hate those. I used to watch those on television, and you'd be watching a television show, and all of a sudden, you'd look at the clock and go, man, this thing's about to go off. And then you'd look up and boom, to be continued. Sorry. Anyway, let's dig into this thing. Now, the very first time I ever showed you a reel in this same name and category was the early model that I found that was in incredible shape, and that would be the Bach Brown Spinster. That's right, a half bale model made by the Lionel Train Company. That's right, and I'm going to try to say this name to you real quick. It's the Ariax. Ariax? Ariax? It is A-I-R, Air, X, E-X, Air X. I guess it's just Air X. Um, this was the first one that we found. This thing turned out to be really nice. I mean, I couldn't get over how it cleaned up. I don't really know that this reel was used very much at all. But yes, it, men and their toys, you know, we took men and their toys to a whole new level. Or I say we take kid toys companies like Lionel Train Company and we turn it into adult toys like fishing reels. Stuff like that. Very cool reel. Now, what I have found is the Bach Brown Spinster 6. That's right. We have a copper colored Bach Brown Spinster 6. So what we are going to do today is tear into this thing and you see that it is an entire bale there. These were later models obviously. They came a few years after the half bales kind of ceased to exist anymore. Of course still made by the Lionel Train Company. This poor guy here is not in great shape and I'm hoping that I can get it apart. Now the problem that we're having is right here. Inside the bale the springs missing and the screw that holds it all together. There, there's a screw there, but there's a certain style or a design of screw that holds that bale on. And it's kind of a barrel screw. It, uh, it has threads at the end that are considerably smaller than the diameter of the shaft that goes through here and holds this bale in place. Because right now, because the screw is the same diameter all the way through, the threads are right but the thickness of the middle that holds this bale in place is not. So, we're gonna dig into this thing. They are not very technical, um, so that's why it's also good to make this a part one and part two, because uh, I, can, I can stretch this one out and say, you know, this little nut right here can only be found in the deserts of Antarctica. They're made by penguins. And a lot of those penguins didn't pass down this knowledge, and that is why the Bach Brown Spinster from the Lionel Train Company went out of business. All right, Bach Brown Spinster, six. The first thing we need to do is let's just go ahead and get that off there. The drag on these things is based upon 
a split kind of bail, uh, barrel down in there. When you screw this thing down, it goes down in there and it spreads them apart. And uh, that's, that's all you get for drag. That's how it works. So it's a plasticky rubber kind of piece in there that you just cross your fingers and hope holds up. Uh! All right, well, that's still got the uh, felt ring around it. You very seldom see that. That's it's still got the felt ring on there. <laughs> very rare right there. And let's see, what does it take to get that apart? It's funny it started clicking. It wasn't doing that before. This is what happens when you deal with things that uh, you can't find any videos on yourself to, to actually get them taken apart. These are the things that always worry me about doing this stuff is that you're always worried you're going to twist something, break something, and these things are old. It's very hard to find parts for these. Well, at least it's coming apart. Okay. Well, those screws are steel. Fortunately, it feels like somebody's been in this thing before. And these screws are not... Yeah, there's some grease and oil down in there. All right, okay, that was definitely easier than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> okay, let's see here. We have, obviously you have your gear, your uh, your main gear. Look at the size of that, that gear. That right there could lift an engine out from under the hood of a car. Wow, man, this is, uh... oh, okay. All right, the pin just slides right out. Awesome. That sure did make things easy because I was trying really hard to figure out because I didn't feel that pin moving. But there's another wheel on the other side behind this shaft and that pin right there goes down through both of them. So now this ought to come right out. They look like they're the same size. No, they're not. Okay. Short wheel goes in the back. Tall wheel goes in the front. Let's try to remember that. That that ditch right there, the short wheel goes down in the ditch. Okay. The fun part about this is, is that realizing that you're dealing with a company that made toys, toy trains. So you know the toy trains were not exactly, you know, these they weren't cheap. They weren't done, you know, they were are <laughs> talking about something that has a lot of moving parts. All right, I am back, and I'm going to tell you, for you it was just a couple of seconds, but for me it was quite a while. This reel is not going to win any beauty pageants. Unfortunately, the oil and grease that whoever the last individual was used in it has stained, stained it badly, stained the paint where you just, you cannot get it out. I've tried everything. Um, you can see it, it just stained the paint and ate right through it. I don't know what they used, but it definitely was not not paint friendly anyway. Now, as far as a functioning reel goes, this thing might do okay. Um, let's just say it's going to do okay so far for the bottom half. At this point, all we have is the bottom half that, that'll work. Again, our problem is in here. And until I get the right screw and spring for that, that spot right there, it will not function correctly. Also is, I, I didn't take this apart because I cannot figure out how to get it out. There is no pin. It does not thread. The only thing I can figure is that it is pressed. It is actually pressed fit in. This piece here is trying to come apart. This is what relieves the pressure on the swing arm that releases the bale. I'm going to try to press or take a hammer or chisel and hammer these edges back down because they are coming up. And it's allowing this part to spin, which you don't want that to spin because if that spins, that will not hit correctly on that little arm right there and release the 
or at least the bail. So I'm going to get me a chisel and a small hammer and I'm going to whack on that little right edge right there and see if I can get that to uh, go back down flat. All right. I did the best I could with that. What it looks like, and you know, and really this is all j just by what I see. Somebody's been in it before because there were two different types of grease in it. There was two different types of, of grease in the thing and one had hardened up completely and one was not. Someone has tried to get this apart before and they've taken it apart before, which is why I think this is missing, okay? That's the wrong screw that is not supposed to be there. Um, so that stuff's missing. The different grease on the inside, grease on the inside here. And I think someone tried to take this thing apart uh, the same way that basically I was trying to take it apart, but I was being a little bit more cautious about how it comes apart, and they were not. So what I think, uh, this right here is actually turning, and I probably could take and tap around that edge and make that stop turning as much as it is, but it's not bad enough that I think it's going to make the reel not work. So uh, this little piece that looks like a hurricane up here, is again what hits this lever right there when it comes around it hits that lever opens it up and releases the bale right now because the bale is not set correctly it's not hitting it so until I get the right screw to hold that in place in the spring all we can do is put together the bottom half and uh, we'll just have to give it a try but this looks to me like somebody has like maybe tried to unscrew it or whatever but there's no threads in there there's I, the way I see this that's pressed inside I assume you either have to press it back out again which I don't know how you would do if you try to pull on this, you might pop that off of there, which as you can see, is just pressed on. And uh, you probably would end up destroying the reel where it wouldn't work at all. So, so we don't do that. And thank goodness that the last person, I guess, stopped in the process. Uh, we're going to put it back together again. And, to, and uh, of course, again, we're just going to put the bottom half together and then maybe we'll get our other parts at some point. Hopefully next week. Oil the shaft, grease the gears. That's how this works. We have to put... It was the short one that went down in there. I say down in there. There we go. Okay, see how that little skateboard wheel just went right down in there and then we have to put the shaft down in there line the hole up take our clean pin here put it through the hole it goes into the skateboard wheel down in the groove there see how that works then pull that up slightly all right, we're going to put our other skateboard wheel right there like that. I think I'm going to put a little grease on that shaft just to hold that wheel on. All right, now let's lay this down right here. And this, like I said, this is a very, very easy reel to deal with. It's not a complicated machine by any means. Put a little grease on the end of that. Now we're going to put some oil in this hole. There we go. She's got a clicker. She has got a clicker. Now let's get some grease in the grooves here. I just like to smear it in, into the teeth. I just run my fingers along there and I squish it down in the grooves so that way I know each individual tooth is getting some grease in it. As big as this gear is, it needs all it can get. This little center piece, this little center hole right here, is where that other skateboard wheel is going to ride. 
So we're going to want to put a little grease in that so it can push it around in there. Now to keep our gear from falling out, I'm going to put this gorgeous new crank now that it's beautiful like it is back on here. We will tighten that once we get it all back together. Now let's see here. All right, I'm gonna put just a little grease around here for right now. This, this again is your drag bushing basically. Even though that probably shouldn't have grease on it, I'm putting some on it. On the clicker gear at the bottom there to kind of take away some of the loudness of the clicker. Okay, doing the thing. Doing the thing, but we're not doing the thing for the last time. We're just doing it for the a premature kind of doing the thing here because we still got parts on the way and we still need parts. It's functioning and doing, at this point, the bottom half is doing what it's supposed to do. All we need is the right screw for the bale in the spring and hopefully it'll do the right thing. I mean, you can look at that and you can see where the grease just stained the paint. There's just nothing you can do with that other than strip it down and repaint it. And uh, these reels, there are people out there to collect them and, and, and buy them and that kind of thing. And do many people fish with them? I don't think so. Uh, I've seen a few videos other than mine uh, with the half bale uh, where people are fishing with these. This is, uh, how do I say this? For me, okay, now this is just me. This is something I would get working, make it work, fish with it a couple times, and then uh, it's probably going to go in the cabinet over there or I sell it to somebody that really wants it. Um, but first of all, we have to make sure that it works and does what it's supposed to do, and uh, we're going to do that as soon as that spring and uh, screw get here. But as of right now, she's all greased up, all cleaned up, working in both directions here. We got the anti reverse doing its thing. We just need some parts and they are on the way. Matt's Real Repair, Wisconsin. Matt hooked me up with some more parts again. And uh, for you guys, you know, if you're looking for parts and stuff, you give Matt a call and uh, either Matt or Alex will probably answer the telephone. And uh, you guys can tell him what you have and he'll ask whatever questions he needs to ask, figure out what it is that you need and he will get you going if he's got it, if he's got it there. Um, and that's how a lot of these places are. They just either have used parts from other reels that's been disassembled or you get lucky and they have new old stock that has never been on a, on a reel where they've bought other people out, other repair places and they happen to have all this stuff. So. We've been very fortunate. Um, I don't think, I can only think of two times that Matt has ever said to me, I don't have that. Now there's a couple of things you're gonna call about that Matt's gonna say, I don't have that. Because I have it. I bought the last whatever it was. Sorry, I, all I can do is apologize. Anyway, here we go. Uh, just waiting on parts. So there will be a part two. Hope you enjoyed part one. Wasn't a very long video, I know, but uh, by having two videos for this particular reel, we'll make it a little bit longer. And then we'll get to go out there and fish with this thing, providing it does what it's supposed to do when I'm finished. Let's cross our fingers and hope that it does. Thank you guys for watching. Very much appreciate you. We will see you on the next one. Whatever the next one may be. Finish cleaning out my bowls here. You always got to clean out your bowls when you're done. You got to clean up. Don't leave stuff just laying around. Clean your table. Clean your workspace. Make sure everything's put away in its place. And do all that. Get all oil and grease off of here because the next thing, let me tell you a little thing about grease. Grease is a funny thing. You get grease on you and you think you got it off 
And the next thing you know, you got grease on the door handle, you got grease on the back of your couch, grease in the truck, on the back seat, grease in the pillow, grease everywhere. It, it grows, the stuff hits you and it's like a blob. It just goes boom and it blows up and goes everywhere and gets all over you. It's just nasty. I'm just saying, clean your area up. Listen to me, I ain't got no reason to lie to you about it. Clean your area 